This wing is complete except for fabric covering. It's 40 feet long. Considerable skill is necessary in assembling these wings. They must be as strong as possible, consistent with light weight. These dotted lines outline the inboard portion of the leading edge section of the wing, more frequently called the nose section. The nose section is assembled with the leading edge up. The spar is placed on the base of the jig. The spar is positioned longitudinally into the jig by means of these trunnion irons and stud. This anchors the spar securely in place. Stretch the center line wire from one end of the jig to the other. This center line is the precision source from which to check all work on this jig. Position the spar from this center line. Measure the width of the spar to establish the exact center. Then suspend a plumb bob from the center wire. Now move the spar until the mark is exactly under the plumb bob point. Then clamp the spar securely in the jig. Next attach the rib locators on the jig. Notice the guides on these strips. They are used to locate the position of the ribs which are spaced at regular intervals on this type of wing. String another wire to establish the exact center of the leading edge strip. This wire gets its position from the center line. Each rib must set squarely on the spar and be in position at the guide wire. The rib spar strip at the end of the rib must make a clean straight joint across the top edge of the spar. If the leading edge notch does not exactly straddle the guide wire at the tips of the notch, use a block plane to reshape the spar end of the rib. It still doesn't fit. Be careful not to remove too much. The fit now seems satisfactory, but check it carefully with a scale. Be sure the rib touches all three guide irons, then clamp it in place against the top one. Drive one nail partway through the spar strip of the rib and into the spar to hold it temporarily. Fit all similar ribs in position. Be sure they fit squarely at the spar and line up at the guide wires. These two webbed ribs will form a receptacle for the landing light. One is a compression rib. These ribs are made smaller to allow for the reinforcing plywood around the light opening. Apply aircraft glue to the spar and also the rib.
Use strips of angle plywood for additional strength and to hold the rib in place. Drive the nails in tight, but the nail heads must not crush the surface of the plywood. Wipe off the surplus glue with a damp rag. This strong member is called a junction rib because it helps to make the junction with the outboard panel of the wing. Fit it carefully. Notice that the cap strips of this rib straddle the spar. These ends must be cut so a joint can be made. Later, these cap strips will be joined to the cap strips of the junction rib of the center section. This will make a continuous cap strip on this panel of the wing. Make the saw cut diagonal so a fitted joint can be made. Recheck the fit before gluing it in permanently. Apply glue to all contacting surfaces. Hold it down tight. Drive one nail into each strip to prevent it from slipping out of place. Protect the cap strips with clamp blocks. Then securely clamp this important joint for pressure over the glue area. Use a level to establish the exact perpendicular. Tack on a brace strip to secure its position. This will be removed after the glue sets. Now all the ribs previously positioned can be glued and nailed into place permanently. After removing the temporary nail and clamp, apply glue to the spar. Also apply glue to the end of the rib. After positioning the rib, replace the clamp at the top. Drive in sufficient nails for an equal distribution of pressure on the glued area. Nails should be in tight, but the head should not crush the surface of the wood. All other ribs are installed in a similar manner. Wipe off the excess glue promptly with a clean, damp rag. The rag in the hand should be washed frequently when working with glue. Now install the leading edge strip. It must make one continuous strip the full length of each wing section. Make a final check to see that all ribs are exactly centered. Now remove the guide wire. Test each notch with a wooden thickness gauge. This one's a little too small. Enlarge it with a wood rasp. The fit should be snug, but not too tight.
make sure that glue is applied to the entire surface of each notch. Wipe off the surplus. When making this fit, be careful to work it into all of the notches at the same time. Use a wood block to tap it in and to prevent damage to the strip. Again, wipe off the excess glue that has squeezed out. The framework is now complete and the rib locators may be removed. To have a smooth outside wing surface, it's necessary that all rib surfaces that contact the skin be exactly even with each other. Use a straight edge to check for high spots. Use a spoke shave like this or a block plane to reduce such high spots. Smooth it nicely with a fine wood rasp. Recheck with the straight edge. Now install the light wires. This pair connects with the landing light. Tape all wires securely into place at each rib. Between ribs, wind a few turns of tape around the wires to hold them together. Give the tape section a coat of shellac to keep out moisture and insulation rot. Give the top side of the spar a coat of quick drying varnish before it is sealed in by the plywood skin. A careful inspection must be made of all work and glue bonds before the skins are applied. Rib parts may have become damaged during assembly. All parts must be in place and securely glued. The wiring must be in order and protected with shellac. Plywood skin sections have been previously cut according to templates or drawings. The nose section skins have been bent or formed to fit their respective places on the wing. The skin is made of plywood. See that the center bend line mark lines up with the center of the leading edge strip. Mark the edge and center position of the skin. The cross strips are skin stiffeners. The inside surface of the skin has been varnished with the exception of the glue areas. Glue does not hold well on a varnished surface. Apply an even medium coating of glue to all surfaces that will contact the wing frame. Also apply glue to the spar and rib edges that will contact the skin. Make sure that the center bend line falls on the center of the leading edge strip as previously marked. Then tack this position so it will not slip. After fastening the skin down at the leading edge, nail it down evenly on both sides, working with the grain of the wood toward one lower corner to prevent warping or buckling of the skin. 
These nailing or pressure strips are made of thin wood over a cotton webbing, so they may be pulled off when the glue has set. Be sure to completely cover all glued areas with pressure strips well nailed down for a good glue bond. One skin overlaps the other where they join over the edge of a rib. One glue bond thus overlays the other at this overlap. In a production line, two groups of operators usually work together on the nose section so the glue bonds can be completed quickly. Allow the glue to set thoroughly. It's then possible to pull off the pressure strips and pull out the nails without injury to the glue bond. The cotton webbing strip under the wood strip helps in pulling out the nails. No nails should remain because they would injure the fabric that will later cover the wing. Grasp the webbing firmly with pliers and give it a strong pull. Pull out any remaining nails. The nose section is now turned on its side so the skin edges can be squared. The skin edges should make an even straight line for a good fit with the center section skins later. A long straight edge is tacked on as a guide. A flange on the saw assures cutting to the proper depth. Remove the surplus wood and glue with a chisel and scraper. These finishing operations require care and skillful workmanship. Smooth down the overlaps. Use a tiny block plane to improve the bevel. Be careful not to remove too much. Smooth it further with a file. Use triple O sandpaper for a fine finish. Carefully sand off the rough surfaces left by the nail holes. This is the completed nose section ready for assembly into the inboard panel of the wing.